uh, that we can and help. And we're alive. Yay! Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Community Chats for Friday, May 5th. My name is Erin Oath. I am project manager here in the Office of Community Engagement at the university. I'm joined today by my colleague, Jody Holland. Anthony Syracusa is away today. Um, and we're here for these regular conversations, highlighting individuals in the Lafayette Oxford University community who are working hard to make a positive difference in our region. Community chats, as you probably know, come to you live on Facebook on Wednesdays and Fridays from 12 noon to about 1230. Our goal with this initiative is to elevate community leaders from our region and allow them to tell their story, allow you to get to know who they are, what are they doing, and how can you be involved in the work that they're carrying on. Uh, would you like to be interviewed for the show? Do you know somebody we should talk to? We want to hear from you. So you can be in touch with us here on our Facebook page. You can message us. You can also email us at engaged at olemiss.edu. Community Chats is an initiative of the Office of Community Engagement at the University of Mississippi in close partnership with our friends at LOFT, the Lafayette Oxford Foundation for Tomorrow. You can learn more about LOFT in our first episode of the series. Today, we have the honor and privilege of being joined by Wayne Andrews from the Yakna Matafa Arts Council, also known as the Yak. We are so, de so delighted to have you on the show today, Wayne, welcome. Thank you for uh, having me. Thank you for pronouncing it right. That's two people today, so I feel that's a that's a win. Uh, oh, my work I, is done. <laughs> I was practicing beforehand. I wasn't going to tell you that, but yes. <laughs> I, I, I had to practice too. I had to practice too. Thanks. It's moving uh, from being a novice and a rookie to to being someone that's from the community, right? Uh, or uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping uh, that it means we've we've all read all of our Faulkner. Um, <laughs> I keep getting stuck on uh, Jack Pendarvis and other people. I'll, I'll get there. I'll get through all of it eventually. <laughs> That's true. I, I, I still have some more Faulkner reading to do as well. Okay, well, let's jump into it. So Wayne, can you just tell us a little bit about who you are, where you grew up, how you ended up here in Oxford Lafayette? Uh, sure. So, uh, well, I'm Wayne Andrews. I'm the director of the Yakna Batafa Arts Council, and I also uh, uh, serve as the chair of the Mississippi Presenters Network. So our arts council um, helps other arts councils across the state be sustainable and collaborative uh, to promote Mississippi as a creative place. Uh, so the work we're doing here is being replicated throughout the state and helping other groups. Uh, and we're also learning from them. So that's, it's, it's a, a Great role to be in. Uh, I grew up, uh, I, I kind of claim to be from Connecticut. Um, I moved 13 times by the time I was 13. So I moved a lot. I was originally born in Kentucky, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, and then moved around a lot. Uh, and I ended up uh, going to uh, undergraduate at Central Connecticut State University, uh, and then went to law school at Mississippi College School of Law and ended up in Memphis and worked for the Orpheum Theater uh, the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, Memphis in May, the University of Memphis, and uh, helped launch Live at the Garden at the Memphis Botanic Garden, uh, and then kind of had uh, my own business for a while that uh, did organizational events for things, everything from Publishers Association of the South to the King Biscuit Blues Festival. And uh, as our children uh, graduated college, uh, my wife suggested that maybe we find a place uh, that had a sense of community, a place we'd like to be, a place we could be part of the community instead of on the road doing festivals and events. And uh, Oxford was the answer. And luckily, there was a job at the Arts Council. Uh, and we called two people. We called Ron Shapiro and uh, John Currents, uh, because my wife knew John Currents through the Southern Foodways Alliance. And uh, strangely enough, Ron Shapiro used to call me for concert tickets because of my, he knew my wife. <laughs> Um, so any concert I was doing, he would call me for tickets. Uh, and they were great about talking about the community and saying uh, and sharing that someone that would be invested in, uh, you know, working with others and thinking about how to grow uh, and who wasn't an artist uh, that, you know, so it wouldn't be I wouldn't be divided between being an artist and, and focused on helping other artists. They thought it would be a great advantage. And uh, 
I've been here. This will be my 11th year. Um, we love it here. Um, we have, I think, been active partners in the community. I, I know you've already interviewed my wife, who's the director of Doors of Hope. Um, but we've done everything from, you know, serve on committees of other organizations, um, run for office and, uh, uh, you know, been volunteers for a number of projects. So it's, we love being here uh, and, and it's a great fit for us. That's fantastic. Wayne, you and I work so, many, so much on different projects and, you know, that's the, the question I always want to know is how did you land this position? You kind of just told us that. But I want you to expand a little bit more about what you appreciate in this community. You do so much. You give so much. What's the appreciation of this community uh, in Oxford? Well, you know, it's, it's nice that you say I do so much because I don't. The community does a lot. Um, everything that is happening is because someone has an idea. Um, and what I, what I love about the Arts Council, both our board, our staff, and the partners we have is... Uh, I think the arts are a natural place for people to be creative and both entrepreneurial um, and that we seem to be this open door for people to come with ideas and we start putting partnerships together. Um, we start looking at, uh, at opportunity. Um, and so a lot of things happen. We are fortunate that the Arts Council gets to be involved in it and a partner of it, facilitate um, and su support where we can. And you see it come out in that we think about um, entrepreneurial growth and business growth and, and, and equity through economic opportunity through uh, the community supported artist program. We're actually working with the chamber and the EDF and how to teach people how to grow their business so they could be already in business. Uh, and then we offer seed funding opportunities to help them grow or make that next step. Um, you know, and the loft then helped us grow that idea even bigger uh, by giving us, uh, you know, seed funds to start offering loans so people could purchase equipment and grow their business, um, which then brought in, uh, you know, banking partners to help people understand how to do finances so they could kind of keep leveling up and grow. And we've seen small business growth. Um, we've seen people, we've been able to help people start everything from a food truck to, you know, uh, a, a, a kind of fashion-based business. We've you know, one of the projects this year is taking, is starting a game, uh, a game company in town uh, that we were able to leverage relationships. Again, Ryan Miller at the CME helped the creative people figure out the logistics. Now the company's going to start up. So um, all these things kind of have connectors about building community. And, and we're fortunate that so many people care about education and retaining and, uh, you know, bringing the widest range of, of opportunity to our community and, and capitalizing on those creative voices that um, we see it go, you know, cross pollinate between offering great programs like Sarah Fest or, you know, the, the Southern Foodway Symposium growing uh, and, and conference for the book to, uh, you know, just events like the film festival growing exponentially from being a one day thing to now it's, you know, one of the top 50 in the country and uh, you know, something that started as a, a partnership with the museum, the Fiber Fest, and, and uh, I cannot think of the fiber store that, that we worked with. Oh, gosh, I feel terrible because Lynn Wells was there. I cannot think of the other person, but the three, a, a business, a museum, and an arts council got together, and now we have the largest fiber festival in the state that gets nationally recognized. Um, so, I think that's what's so unique and I'm glad we get to be part of it and get to be, someone said it to me best. They said, this is a town that says yes to things uh, that they had been to so many other towns. And the, and the first answer was always no, that this town looks for a way to say yes uh, to a great idea. So I'm rambling. <laughs> great. No, you're good. I think I've been in the Lafayette Oxford community for a little over a year now and I definitely say that one of the things I really appreciate it about is the arts and culture here. It is just a thriving community and so much of it is those small businesses and the entrepreneurship. 
And uh, as you were talking about uh, the mission of the Arts Council and all the work that you do, um, it really resonated with me the way that you talk about the arts as an economic driver in our community. So could you just elaborate on that a little bit? And, and some, some people don't think about arts and business together, and yet it's such an important part of our Oxford landscape. It's not, it's not an important part of the Oxford landscape. It's an important part of Mississippi's landscape. Um, and and I, so I ask people to, you know, to think about the arts in a very broad sense. If you, if you get narrow and say, well, oh, you know, how can, how can theater be such an economic driver? Um, well, I want you to think about, uh, you know, in a very broad sense that the Beard and Risers and the Tom Howers are artists. They, they went to art and added math to it. Um, the graphic designers, the web designers, the, the, the you know, um, uh, Matthew Gray and his um, uh, tech company, that, that's a small company with five programmers on the square. They're all doing interface kinds of things. These are very, although tech and business oriented, also very creative oriented. Um, and for the arts, the arts are a huge driver for our state. $2.6 billion of economic impact within our state. Uh, 26,000 jobs across the state. Um, Lafayette County participated uh, five years ago when we're up again uh, to participate in it next year, they had to postpone it for the Americans in the Arts Economic Impact Study. They do it every five years um, and they look at the economic impact uh, of arts and cultural programs in a community. Uh, and we represented Mississippi. Lafayette County alone had 223,000 people participate in an art and cultural activity in one year 70-30 split, 70% 70 from within the region, 30% from out. So that tells me people were not coming for a festival and leaving and not caring where the festival was. They wanted to come for place. They wanted to come because it was here and it was part of, and, and here was part of that experience. It ended up having an $11 million economic impact in our community. Um, so that is roughly a, a, a guaranteed football game win. Like that, that's a football game that we won hands down um, you know, but we just spread that economic impact out over the year. And so if you look at creative thinking like, um, you know, and, and how we're going to grow our community and that kind of growth mindset, then when we start building things like the art crawl, which has become a very you know, staple of the community, um, that it was built on a Tuesday because, you know, we already have things on Thursday and we already have football season. We wanted to fill out and get people on the square and out to the restaurants on a Tuesday and, and get people into venues that were not, um, that were being underutilized. And now you've got the museum and restaurants and all these people highlighting artists and benefiting by 300 people showing up the fourth Tuesday of each month to walk around the square and um, enjoy, you know, both art and, and, and the experience. Uh, so we're using it to drive our businesses um, you know, you talk about the restaurants in our community uh, and people talk about the food. That's, that's part of the creative economy. Uh, you know, you look at a small town like us that has the number of James Beard winners we have, and they're all drawing upon, you know, Vish is drawing upon Southern and Indian cuisine. Joe uh, at St. Leo is drawing upon uh, what he's learned in his life experience to produce cocktails and tell his story. We're getting food, culture, education, and art all rolled into one and people come and, and, and support it. So uh, the more we can support these things, it gives voice to people, it creates opportunity, it builds a bridge uh, and it makes our community stronger by having uh, people with, with unique ideas launching businesses. Um, I mean, how many of us have gone to Zop, uh, you know, at the, Thai, the Thai restaurant, Rice and Spice? you start thinking about what's behind all that food and the stories and the culture and, and we're all supporting it. Well, you're exactly right, especially about the economic uh, driver uh, coming from the arts. Tell us about your staff. Who helps facilitate this with you and how do they serve your organization? Uh, so we are, uh, we're, we're a large but small staff. Um, <laughs> there is four of us, which is, uh, Foreign Arts Council, very large uh, in Mississippi. Uh, but again, last year we did about 320 days of programming. Uh, so we have Caitlin Hopper, who is a uh, graduate of the university. Um, 
in, in Barksdale Honor College. And she is the operations coordinator. So uh, she is that point of contact. She helps keep everything running, the schedules going, the social media, uh, the calendar of events and coordinating uh, and helping uh, our partners uh, get programming going. Uh, we have Megan Gallagher, who has just added so, such a dimension to what we've been able to do. Uh, she is our outreach and education uh, coordinator. She does the, um, she really runs the Big Bad Business Series and is so thoughtful and innovative in, in how she tries to bring new voices to it. Um, uh, going out and gathering information from participants and, and delivering programs that they can identify and, and, and have asked for as a need. Uh, and then just looking at opportunities that help us um, raise funds to reinvest. Uh, so we'll, we're gonna have some announcements about uh, support that we're gonna be getting coming for next year, uh, next week, uh, that is gonna help us invest more in, in entrepreneurial growth for creatives. So, um, and it, it took her doing a lot of research, asking for a lot of help and putting teams together. Uh, but all of a sudden, you know, to get, to get someone outside of our state looking at a project in, in Mississippi and in, in Oxford in a small town and holding it up and going, we're gonna invest in that because these guys have a clever idea of how to really build something that could be sustainable. Um, that when that announcement comes out next week, June 10th noon, um, we're, we're gonna be happy. We're, I think the community will be happy to say um, that even in, in very struggling times, we've got a team that is focused on the future and, and, and continuing to build on, on, on a, a strong and diverse community. Uh, and our final person is uh, uh, Adam Davis. He's our, our technical person. Adam's uh, got degrees in, in art uh, and uh, came to us from Chicago and is a, uh, a veteran and he is amazing. The man can, can paint, build, weld, uh, and is loves to work with the creative voices in the town and help them see their vision come to life. And we've had so many people say their program has been enriched uh, because he's been able to sit with them and, and help them think it through to do it on the budget they had and, and offer the vision they had. And, and I think our programming is has, has gotten so much better and our services to the community have gotten better because we've added someone with that skill set. Um, plus I'm too scared to weld. So we'll, we'll skip that part of the job. Oh, that's great. Um, well, Wayne, you've already talked some about the specific programs that y'all do throughout the year. Um, but can maybe you zoom out and just say like, Within the scope of a year, what, what are some of the different types of things that, uh, that you do to support local artists? Sure, you know, um, we, we think of the Arts Council and the board, we kind of think of a, a couple of key roles in, that we serve. One is, is tools. We think we wanna be the toolbox, that the barrier for a lot of people to, to launch is um, whether it's place, whether it's resources, as in sound equipment, lighting equipment, uh, production equipment, that, that that seems to be a barrier because it's a cost. Um, we all know how expensive it is to buy a house here, how much rent on the square costs, those things. And if we expected a theater company to be able to rent a place to produce a play, if we, um, you know, looked for those kind of things. All of a sudden, all the money is being spent on the overhead. So the Arts Council focuses on being the toolbox. So we started programs with the film festival like Oxfilm that brought in, bought and, and acquired the technology to make films and then have a very simple system that allows people to check it out. So they will start making films in Mississippi and in this region. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was a response to uh, talking with film producers about why films weren't coming here and those that economic investment. They said, we didn't have the tools and we didn't have the talent. Well, now we have the tools. And uh, in the last two years, our film equipment has been uh, in use for 26 films a year. 
So now we have the talent. Um, and we keep replicating this model. We have it with computers and software. So if they don't have wireless internet and technology, we now have that so someone can, can run their business. So we're providing the tools, we're providing investment. We do have grants um, to help people take um, their idea to reality. Um, we don't focus a lot on, well, I wanna paint landscapes and will you pay me to paint landscapes? We fund how is someone gonna be sustainable as a visual artist or if they're going to start some other business uh, and, and, you know, we kind of stack those things as we've talked about big, big, bad business and the community supported artists. And then we have grants directly to artists to help them launch uh, that idea. Uh, so it's providing the tool, it's, it's providing the, the resource, uh, and then providing accessibility. So, uh, you know, we have, have the spaces and um, provide everything from the ticketing to the marketing support so that people can focus on their project instead of the operational part. And then hopefully once we get them up and running, whether they are teaching a cooking class, uh, as we've offered, whether it's Latin classes, which we've offered, which is, um, or whether it's dance and film, uh, we help them get going and then we keep helping them refine their thing and their business model. Um, and it's allowed us to uh, give opportunity to people that that, that just had an idea and needed assistance and help us walk it through and, and, and break it down. So uh, we focus on those and then hopefully throw in a few fun festivals uh, to bring everyone's attention to what we do. And uh, we have a nice year round experience. Well, more than programming, um, I mean, you do, like you said, 300 plus days of programming. What are some of the challenges you experience either in these current times or just in normal times? you can share with us? Uh, the current times have definitely made it more unique. Um, I'm, I'm happy that what we were able to do quickly, uh, if everyone has been following Stay at Home Fest, is because we invested in tools, we pivoted a lot of our programming online. Um, and, uh, you know, with support from Loft, uh, some, some other donors and money we had in our J.E. Pitts Artist Fund, we were able to hire restaurant employees and um, artists to produce content online. So we, but we, you know, retained a sense of community, helped keep people uh, in place and, and, and uh, able to pay bills um, and uh, kept moving forward with content. Um, you know, the biggest challenge is that it, again, it's a staff of four and in just, paying bills, doing marketing, writing the grants, and then helping people build programs, uh, it stretches you thin. It stretches you very, very thin. Um, but the reward is that we do have such a wide range of programs uh, from everything with, you know, programs that we do with the Sarah Isom Center. We were able to offer an artist and a writer in residence last summer um, from regular theater to uh, art exchanges with other arts communities uh, across the state. Um, and then even to coordinating business series. So it's, uh, I think I lost the question, Jody, I'm so sorry. No, we're just, you're expressing no, the challenge. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> in today's, uh, you know, climate, it's been very challenging. You guys did, it, did a wonderful job of pivoting and moving online and still providing mm -hmm. services to the community. So we appreciate it so much. Yeah, and so, um, and in that, in that year round kind of, if it was, everything was normal, it is that forecasting mm -hmm. and uh, forecasting, you know, we're usually planning a year to 18 months out. Um, we don't organize things 30 days in advance. We, we know what we're going to do and we spend time several times a year reflecting on the, on what we're doing and are we doing it the best? Can we do it better? Um, what have we learned in the past year? Um, and then what is our capacity and gee, how could we, if, if we find an opportunity, how can we, if we can't manage it with, with our resources, how could we, uh, what, what do we need to strive for? And, uh, the, you know, as I mentioned, you know, previewed uh, that we'll have an announcement on the 10th, uh, that announcement comes from all the work we've been doing and, and, and getting people to help us analyze it and think through it and think strategically about the growth and sustainability. Um, 
because that, you know, that concept that we're going to announce next week literally started 18 months ago. We said, how would we make this happen? Actually, it started two years ago. We said, how would we make this happen? And we kept looking for opportunities and telling that story of what if we could do this for people? Uh, and two years later, someone has stepped up to say that that we that needs to happen. Um, so there is a slow development. We, we are always working, but please know it. Sometimes these things take a little more time than we even want them to. Uh, as a very creative organization, usually we want it now. Um, but we're good at trying to find the right answer. Uh, and I have a wonderful staff that reminds me we can't do it all at once. Uh, so it, it, it takes a lot of planning and I'm glad we have a team that helps. I'm glad we have a great board and that we have volunteers uh, from the community uh, that give us the gift of their knowledge. I mean, we, you know, one of the great things about this town as a retirement community is there's so many people with expertise that are, are helping us uh, with, you know, 30 years of knowledge and improving what we're doing. Um, and so I really appreciate that because I've grown both in how I'm able to serve uh, because we've been able to tap that, that vo those volunteers in the community that, uh, you know, we have one that comes in once a week and literally serves as a mentor to part of our team of how to do better uh, and how to refine our processes. And it's, we, we see the payoff coming daily. That's cool. In terms of thinking about payoff, um, you've already talked about some of the um, professional awards and some of the development of this work over time. Um, but I wonder, as someone that's been doing this work for over a decade, what keeps you going personally? What, what, what keeps you motivated to keep championing this work? That's kind of mean to phrase it as doing it over a decade. That sounds like a, you know. No, oh, you just said it at the beginning. No, that sounds like it's a lot. <laughs> nothing. When you're 11, you know nothing. A decade, I was like, I'm supposed to know something. Um, uh, so going is, you know, again, this is a town that says yes. And there are so many opportunities here. Um, and, you know, I mean, let's take a look at the current environment. There are opportunities for all of us to do better uh, and, and, and to be a more connected community. And so there's, there's always room for us to grow personally, professionally, and as a community. And so I don't think we've ever, I don't think we'll ever achieve, oh, we're, we, we got this, we're perfect, don't need to do anything else, because there's always something else that'll enhance. Just, just the fact that changes in technology allow us to do something like this uh, and connect. It allows us to, you know, with Stay at Home Fest, what, what, what was serving 300 people in a town, uh, two of the programs have now hit over 4,000 people who have watched it, not stopped by on Facebook, but watched a 30 minute performance by Jimbo Mathis. Um, I would li also like to say that Ivy from Snack Bar has 1,400 people who have watched how to make one of his cocktails. <laughs> so I know where people's priorities are, but, uh, but even, you know, you start seeing, uh, you know, some of the, you know, we had a great one that literally it was two authors talking about books that influenced them. 460 people tuned in. Mm -hmm. And it was, I'm like, wow, you know, there's always going to be something new of how we can improve, get get the audience wider. The fact that we start doing something in, in Starkville, Greenville, Columbus, Tupelo, and Cleveland go, well, let's all collaborate on that. And now we have a statewide voice of what we're offering. They're taking our content and sharing it to their audiences and we're sharing back. Um, uh, you know, every day brings us a new opportunity. Um, and I, I enjoy that. I, I'm not looking to say, look what, what I or we as an organization accomplished. I'm looking to say, what are we going to do next? Um, I, you know, I, you know, I end up with so many ideas that of like, look, look at what we could be doing, not because we're not doing things right, but wow, you know, we've, we've got these great resources from, you know, natural resources. If you go, you know, the Bailey Woods Trail and it's, you know, it, and it's, it's such an amazing space and it's recognized and 
we've got all these great storytellers in the town and we've got so much more that we could be sharing and raising up Mississippi. Um, as someone that, again, as someone that moved here, this is really one of the most amazing places I've ever been because it's a mix of everything. Anything is possible in this place. Um, and it's influences for a state of 3 million people. It influences so much more of our culture. Um, that, you know, why would we ever want to, how could we ever stop? It's going to keep happening. Um, you know, I, I think I said at the beginning that Mississippi is not a place that we have to focus on history because everything is still happening now. Um, and we were just building upon the Faulkners, you know, from Faulkner to, to the contemporary writers. It's happening in music. It's happening in literature. It's, it's, it's happening, uh, you know, with almost everything that we have here in food. Um, so I don't think there'll, there'll never be a reason to stop. Well, Wayne, you talk about the opportunities. How, what are the what ways can people in the community get more involved? How can they contribute to uh, YAC? Uh, yeah. Um, well, again, we we need we need everything from people that will help us execute the programs. People that would that would that are uh, maybe they have knowledge, um, or maybe they would just like to see something happen. So we need volunteers. Um, we need even mentors, people that would like to say, you know, I, I, I want to help. Um, so if you have time, we need that help. Uh, if you are a business uh, and, 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 can, and can help us spread the word, we need people that will, will champion the services we offer. Uh, and then uh, if you are someone that wants to start a project, we, we've got something for you. So come to us, share your idea. The door is open. Uh, we listen and uh, we, do, we don't say yes or no. We, we talk about how we can help make, make it happen. So share your idea. Uh, and then finally, yes, if, if you do have the means to support us, um, we were fortunate uh, coming into this crisis that our board was very prudent and had built a reserve fund, um, thinking we would need it for hopefully a big investment or you know, you know, a, a, a next big step. Uh, it has allowed us to keep functioning and operating right now, um, where and allowed us to put funds out to help the artists and restaurant workers in need. Uh, but our membership drive kicks off this month. And if you would like to become a member, we can really use it right now. Um, and it's, uh, but follow us, follow us on oxfordarts.com, follow us on social media. Uh, if you see something that you like, let us know uh, and let us know how to enhance it. If there's something you think that we're missing, we're not doing it because we don't want to. We're not doing it because maybe we haven't figured out how to and someone can help us do it. Um, we like to build champions. Uh, for ideas. And we're looking for those champions. So if you've got an idea, we, we want to help you. Well, I know we have taken advantage of that and hitting you up to brainstorm ideas. So thank you so much. Uh, we can testify that, that um, you are uh, quite receptive and quite helpful in, in thinking through those ideas and helping us um, know if and how to proceed and go forward. So thank you. Uh, and I hope everyone will join and uh, consider being a member of the Arts Council. Uh, as we wrap up, um, a final one minute. What would be a final one minute message that you might want to leave with people who are listening today? You know, the, to me, the greatest thing about uh, the arts, and again, I'm someone that went to, to business school. I'm colorblind. I'm the worst guy to be <laughs> talking about art, I think. Um, the arts have this amazing ability to connect us. Uh, you know, music and writing and uh, performances, they're all very authentic. They come from someone's uh, experiences or uh, their, their interpretation of a social condition. So at, at, at any time in our history, turning to the arts to help us understand, to help us connect, uh, to help us empathize, 
uh, I think is an amazing uh, power that, that, that the arts have. And uh, you know, so I hope people will take time to use the arts to connect, uh, build bridges. Uh, it, it's a great power that, that it has. Um, you know, if we were all to go to a concert, share a meal, you, you know, you can connect and understand people so much more through those simple acts. Uh, and you can understand. Doesn't mean we have to agree, but we can understand and respect each other. Um, and so I ask everyone maybe to, you know, explore the arts, try in something new um, and uh, see how, see how it feels on you. Um, you will, whether you like it or not, we don't say you have to like it, but whether you like it or not, you will go away enriched because you'll have a new, you, you will have an experience. Oh, good final thoughts. Thank you good so final. much, Wayne. We're so grateful to have you join us today. This has been such a pleasure and such a rich conversation. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you guys for all the help you give us. Uh, thank you for law for helping us get stay at home fest going and, and, and the J.E. Pitts fund and, uh, Aaron, thank you for uh, both being on Leadership Lafayette and being helpful in, in another project we're involved in, uh, but also for, you know, this is not something we have the ability to do as an arts council, but having someone connect all the dots in our community uh, and show that they do overlap is such an important thing. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you to all of you for tuning in. We have a, grow a growing audience of listeners and so thankful uh, that you have found these helpful. And so please feel free to like, comment, share without your audience. Um, a reminder, our next community chat will be next Wednesday, June the 10th. We'll have Erin Smith with CASA of Lafayette County joining us. So you don't wanna miss that. Uh, in the meantime, stay engaged, stay safe, and we'll see you next time on Community Chats. Thanks all. Thank you.